I think Heaven's punishment would be not to see this film. Didn't you think that? Didn't you? Didn't you go? So before I begin the review, I first just want to say that this movie was given to me by SamuraiDVD.com for purpose of review. SamuraiDVD.com should be your go-to store for Samurai Cinema. Most of these films you won't find anywhere else and each film has excellent subtitles and picture transfer. So if you like this channel, chances are you like Samurai films, so don't forget to check out SamuraiDVD.com and use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES. Hidokiri, which translates roughly as assassination, it's also known as Tenchu, which translates roughly as Divine Punishment. This is a 1969 Hideo Gosha film, and it's one of his best. I'm kind of new to Gosha's films, but so far I'm liking them a lot. The other really good one was Goyokin. So if you're already thinking about watching this film, I'm just going to say that it can be hard to understand especially for those unfamiliar with 19th century Japanese history. There's some very intricate plot details in this film that can be a little hard to understand, especially for casual viewers. With that said, casual viewers will still get something out of this film. It's a very human drama, and that's something that everyone everywhere can understand. So I'm kind of starting to see a trend with Gosha films. And that is that he likes to tell stories about the traditional theme of loyalty to one's lord versus doing the right thing. Here, Gosha is able to deliver this theme in such a satisfying way. And a really good double feature would be this film back to back with Boyokin. If you want a simpler, more action oriented revenge tale, then see Goyokin. However, if you want a more thoughtful and multi-layered and grim historical drama, then see this film. I'm on the side of preferring Goyokin just because I think it's easier to follow, and I really like Tetsuya Nakadai's character better in that film. So Hidokiri is apparently very accurate to history. Most of the characters were based on real people and the incidents did happen. In particular, the details about a certain assassination were so on point that it must have been closely followed word for word from historical writing. And I always appreciate that historical level of detail. The historical background for this film is basically that there is this massive power struggle between different samurai clans who are either working to reform yet preserve the Tokugawa shogunate or trying to install the Emperor Meiji as the supreme ruler of Japan. Of course, it seems a lot like those clans that were working for the Emperor were often less interested in reforming Japan, and it seemed a lot like they just wanted their clan to obtain more power. Ironically though, the entire feudal system was officially abolished as one of the first reforms of the Meiji government. It's twists like this in history that make this entire plot kind of bittersweet, and Gosha has always been big on those kind of stories. So what distinguishes this film from Gosha's other movies is his use of color cinematography. Every shot is beautifully composed, and much like Kurosawa, each frame of the film can be its own portrait. There's some pretty stunning shots of the Tosa province, which is known today as Kochi. It's just a really great backdrop for a film, and it makes me want to go there. Just watch the opening sequence to this film, and you're hooked. But the film isn't all pretty to look at. 
This film is very violent and it has a good amount of blood. Some of the violence is pretty drawn out and it does give a sense of realism. There's also a good share of blood sprays and geysers, which I've always been a fan of. But as a whole, even though there's not as much action in this, this is still a more violent and bloody film than Goyogen. As for the performances, we get a great cast of actors. Shintaro Katsu, known for Zatoichi, and he puts one of his best performances I've ever seen in this film. He plays a conflicted protagonist slash anti-hero, and he plays a historical character of Okada Izo. Katsu just manages to bring such humanity to this character, but at the same time, a character that is almost animalistic in nature. Throughout the movie, you'll be kind of conflicted on whether or not you like this character, or if you're supposed to. Katsu's portrayal of Izo's bloody hunger for respect and later his sad attempts at redemption just seem so human that you can't help but feel empathy and sympathy for this character. The real Okado Izo was a Japanese samurai of the late Edo period. He was feared as one of the four most notable assassins of the Bakumatsu period. He's a very tragic and interesting historical figure that's worth looking up. Also, as an added bonus, Takashi Miike's film, Izo, is in a way a direct sequel to this film. And that is because it deals with the same real life character. Of course, Miike's Izo is kinda out there, so it's a good movie worth checking out. There's also Tatsuya Nakadai, and he plays a cold-blooded villain with no humanity at all. And after seeing him play kind of the tormented hero in Goyoken, it's great to see him play such a villain. Nakadai is just capable of so much range. He's just such a great actor. And he's Nakadai. There's nothing more to say about him. Probably the most interesting actor in this is Yukio Mishima. For anyone that knows about him, he's both a fascinating and tragic person. What's kind of freaky about his character is in this, he commits seppuku, and if you know about the real life Mishima, this is almost like a foreshadowing of that event. Having him in this film is kind of like watching a Bruce Lee film. It's a showing of a legendary person on screen in cinema, and there's just something magical about that. I don't think he really had a big acting career. I think the only other film that Mishima was in was Afraid to Die. And that title is something that he was not afraid to do. Unfortunately in this, his character doesn't really get too much screen time, but it did make looking for him kind of fun. Overall, he does do a pretty solid job of portraying this honorable assassin, Shinbei Tanaka. If you're interested in Mishima, don't forget to check out Paul Strader's film on his life. It's one of the best biopics I've ever seen. So this is a historical drama about a real time and real people. Found it a bit hard to follow. I had to watch it twice to kind of understand it better. But nonetheless, if you're interested in Japanese history, then check it out. If you want something easier to follow with more action, then check out Goyoken. You can get both films at SamuraiDVD.com. Don't forget to use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES, and thanks for watching.